Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is Kinks by Mutable Instruments. So for those of you who are unaware of what Kinks is, um, Kinks is one of those utility or well, modules you can't go without. So it offers um, some, yeah, what they call the sign capabilities. They've got logic and they've got a sample and hold unit there as well. So the main reason why I picked this up is because I was, well, I was looking for a sample and hold uh, module and then I found this and I truly fell in love with it. And its versatility, of course, uh, is paramount. And I just want to show you what it can do and how I want to use it. And I will probably feature kinks in a lot of my following uh, videos and my jams as well because well sample and hold has been one of my favorite things to play with when I was still uh, well in my let's call them my pre euro rack days where I still had my uh, the only thing I had was my neutron and that of course had a sample and hold unit and I kept just playing around with that so now I finally have a sample and hold unit that I can fit in my euro rack um, that being said, I would say, well, let's uh, dive right in, shall we? Here we go. So let's have a closer look at kinks. So what I want to do is I just want to go by section by section. So first, let's start with the sign section. So what I've got here is I've got the ROT LFO by Mobula Mobula, and I'm going to be using that as my first source. So let's grab the, uh, the round output. So you can see that on the screen there. Let's uh, give that a bit of a lower frequency so we can actually see what happens there. There you go. That's a nice sine wave. Yep, perfect. And then I've got the copy of that. I'm going to be using that to send that into the sine input. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to grab my third one and I'm going to use that to grab the first output so this is going to be the inverse one so as you can see we are getting the inverse of the, va the, the value that's going in so I can just uh, maybe just change that scale just slightly there you go so you can now re really truly see how that how that works so you can use that first output just as a well as an inverse there so that will typically don't won't have an effect so if we then have a listen to this how you can use this as a modulation output so this is the sound that we're working with I can grab the the original one so let's uh, grab just that here we go so this is the incoming one. There you go. There you go. So that's nice to work with. And if we then take the output, So it's the exact same, but inverted. So let's take the other one. So this is just going to take the positive values. There you go. So you see when the actual incoming uh, voltage is going into the negative ranges, it's just going to stay at zero. It's just nice to visualize these kind of effects, right? And then last and certainly not least, we have the absolute value. So this is of course also crazy if you use this as a ring modulation effect, because you actually do get a higher frequency of course. 
So if we then, instead of using this, and we grab an audio source, so let's grab the, uh, the output from this one as well. And if we then change the, the time, so you see that. So this is the, this is the original sound we're now hearing. If we then change that to listen to the modulated sound, it's an octave higher. So that those are just the fun things you can do with this. I'm just gonna do it like that. And let's go back to the LFO source. So that's the sign part of kinks. Let's go into the logic one, shall we? So let me just quickly disconnect this so we don't have to listen to that sound anymore, at least for, for now. <laughs> so what we do in logic is we need two sources. So I've got in, that's gonna be the exact same one. So that is the ROT LFO, the, uh, the sine wave that's coming in. And for the second one, I'm actually gonna grab this cable and I'm gonna connect that to the owner which is running in LFO mode. So I'm just gonna grab the sign output there as well. You can see that on the right hand oscillator. So let's uh, see that. So as you can see, they are not running in sync. And what you can also see is that the, well, the amplitude of the owner is not as, well, not as big as the amplitude on the ROT LFO. So we can work with that. So we grab that one, we grab the output from A and B, and we put that into the kinks, and then we can actually just select the maximum value. There you go. And you see that that indeed follows both sine waves, but only selects the highest value of both. So this is something that you can play with. So again, let's uh, listen to how this will modulate a sound source. I'm just playing with the frequency right now. That's just perfect. And you can do so many great things with this. And if we then go to the minimum value, it's the exact same one, but now we just follow the, the minimum value. I hope this makes sense for everyone. And then last but not least, let's go into the sample and hold value here. So the first thing that we, uh, let's just disconnect all of this again, and we can just uh, dive into that. So here we actually have two inputs. So you have a value in, your trigger, you've got your noise output, and you've got your sample and hold output. So what we can then do is we can, uh, use the ROT LFO square output, use that to as a trigger, and the LED will indeed indicate what kind of values you're, uh, you're using, and it is normal to use the noise output. So let's have a quick look at what that noise actually is. It is, it is that, it is white noise, nothing special about it. But if we then grab the sample and hold, you'll actually start to see, let me just uh, zoom in a bit, that we get these steps there. And I can just lower the frequency there. But what you can also do is you can also use uh, something like a, well, let's, let's use a, a sine wave as an input. 
So I'm just going to grab the the sign output from the owner. So I'm just going to disconnect this here and I use that as an input. There you go. And if we then increase the So you see that it now just takes a sample of the value of the inputs and it then holds that for the duration of the, well, of the frequency of the uh, ROT LFO. So let's uh, lower this frequency a bit more so you can truly see what kind of resolution you actually get. And if you then take this and you then use that as an output to modulate that frequency and we're just going to listen to that here we go that already sounds like an 8-bit thing right lower the frequency a bit so you can achieve truly great things with the sample and hold units and well of course now we're using the input there but if you just use the noise as inputs you get all of these random values for the duration of the well of the LFO that you're using or the uh, or the clock that you're using essentially so if you then pass this through a quantizer in whatever scale you want to use you're going to get crazy little melodies that you can use um, in your patches you can use this to create generative music and this was actually the main reason why I bought kinks is because I needed or I wanted that's probably better thing to say I wanted a sample and hold unit because I I was always playing with the sample and hold unit on my uh, on my neutron so I wanted to have that functionality in my euro rack as well and now I finally got it so what I now typically do is I grab this grab the sample and hold value and I pass that through my hermit and use its quantizing capabilities and put it in whatever scale I want and it's just great fun to to patch that around so in my uh, upcoming video I'm going to make sure to show you how you can do that and how you can use the hermit as a quantizer for well for instance for sample and hold values so I believe that that's the um, the quick intro to kinks by mutable instruments i hope you enjoyed this let's go back to the studio and wrap this up thanks so much cheers so i hope you enjoyed this deep dive into kinks by mutable instruments and i hope you understand why i'm so in love with this module it is only 4 hp wide and it offers so much functionality and exactly that versatility is why this is going to stay in my rack for quite some time. Unfortunately, uh, Mutable Instruments, well, discontinued this unit, but there are still more than enough available if you go to sites like Tolman uh, or its US, well, counterpart, I'm assuming. Um, so please make sure if you like this, pick one up ASAP. And um, otherwise, well, we might be waiting for... Uh, other players to pick up similar functionality in such a small form factor. Um, as mentioned, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, for those of you who haven't done so yet, please like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions, just comment down below or drop me a line at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl. And for now, I would say, well, please everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for my next video. Cheers.